God, everyone. that one I think you people on on the air there <laughs> just wanted you to know that we do have fun in this church so yes we do yes we do mm -hmm. and this one here is hearing things I think she went to the door to answer and no one there I thought I'd point that out She's our fire red person today, or fire person. She looks fantastic. I'll tell you what, her hairdresser probably went and spent hours on that, but I know it took like two hours just one color for me one time. But anyway, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And welcome to the MCC of the Blue Ridge. If you haven't done so already, try to take off, uh, turn off your phones. Turn them off or turn them all, uh, turn them down. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll go on with this uh, Tuesday night Bible study. Continues at 7 p.m. in person here at the church and broadcast on Face Live, Facebook Live. The topic for March 21st and 28th is the last words of Christ on the cross. I can't wait to hear about that one. I will be here. Yes, ma'am. Won't we? <laughs> we can it the first time, but we'll hear it online. Yeah, we'll hear it online, like she said. So, yeah, we'll be going on vacation. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm good at this, I know. But I have a few more uh, things that were added on to here. I added a few, which could be scary. But um, the uh, Valley Community Church is putting on a free movie for all at 7 o'clock and the movie is called Simon Birch I think it's something about a, a handicapped little boy and, and an elderly person who kind of changes the mind of all the people around him. so it sounds really good and it's like be your, uh, bring your own snacks drinks, what have you popcorn what? it's going to be on Friday on Friday, thank you I, did, I forgot that one little important message. Yes. Okay. See, I added this one, so you know you're going to find some mistakes here, but anyway. We are asking for donations for a family who is homeless. Living in a truck, for some, uh, we are asking for donations for some sleeping bags. I guess they can get some used ones if somebody's got a used one, or they can buy one for them. Or... But we need them soon because it's cold. Need them soon. Oh, you know, it's cold in that truck. And they, they also need uh, laundry money. You know, so think about that. And um, 
you know please give if you can because they they could really use it and be on the lookout we are planning a great i mean a great easter time so i'm really looking forward we're with uh, we're going to have monday thursday gonna have, uh, these are all at seven i don't know we don't know the dates yet but it is a thursday i know that <laughs> the sixth uh, the 6th, okay, 6th. April 6th, put it on your calendars, this is a Monday, Thursday, and of course, right after that would be the Good Friday. The 7th, the 7th, yeah. Yeah, the 7th. <laughs> Thank you, crowd. Right. We'll just put you up here, okay, Patty? Bring the mic back. Uh, so, and we also have the two Easter services on Sunday, following the Friday and the Thursday, yeah. Uh, anyway, 6.45 a.m. 6.45 a.m. On the night. On the night. That's the Sunday. Is the sunrise service. It'll be yeah. here out, out on these grounds out here. It's so beautiful. It's got flowers and everything. It's so pretty out there. And you would really enjoy it. Rhonda, of course, is going to be facilitating all of these. And it's just going to be a wonderful time. A, a wonderful Easter. If you're wanting them really... A time with God, a time to think about Jesus and what he's done for us. It'd be a good time to come in for Easter with us. Okay? Okay, let's continue with, before somebody else tries to make it marks. A song called Step by Step. step you lead me and I will follow you all of my days and step by step you lead me and I will follow you all of my days thank you everyone I, um, before I forget, I, I know that I know right now is our, our prayers and praise time. And, and I, I have to praise again the fact that there are people out in Cyberland that are um, that like the fact that I say, go get you a cracker or some juice or some water. And I joke about the Diet Coke and the, the chicken strip being part of their communion. But I gotta tell you, that really happened. It, it really happened. Um, the person was like, I'm just gonna go get the nearest thing to me. And that's what they did. And they were online, it was back during COVID, and when it was like really ramped up at its worst. And uh, they said, I was able to take communion with the church. And I think that's beautiful. It's very ingenious too, if you think about it. Um, but I, I, as far as our, our prayers and praises, I know that uh, we should we, we keep Bonnie and Patsy um, in, our, in our prayers. Um, pa uh, Patsy's doing, what did Bonnie say? An itty bitty bit better. An itty bitty. And you know what? I'll take itty bitty any day of the week. Mm -hmm. it, I don't know if you amen, but that's an amen. Yeah. All right. Um, the other thing is, um, there is someone uh, in, in my world, a high school classmate, 
He is actually having his kidney transplant today. Oh, wow. And I am so excited for him because this has been, it's been a very long journey for him. Um, I have praises for a praying church. I have praises for a praying church. Ever since I stepped foot in the doors of this church, I know I have been lifted up in prayer. I know I have, when the praises have come along, you all have done that with me. And I know that when I, I say to you, someone you don't even know, someone you have no clue of, they could use your prayer. By the grace of God, I know you're going to do it. And that is an incredible blessing. And I'm going to say amen to you and to God for that. Um, I don't know of any other uh, prayers and praises. Oh, I, meant, I know what I was going to say about the chicken fingers and the chicken strips. Y'all go ahead right now, and out there in Cyberland, go ahead and get you your crouton, your water, whatever. Go ahead and get that so that when communion comes around, you don't have to be scrambling for it, all right? The other thing is out there in Cyberland, if you have any prayer requests or praises that you want to share with us, please feel free to write that, write that, oh my word, type that into the feed, and we will get those, and we will be praying for you. Like I said, this is a praying church, and I tell you what, I thank God for it. Do we have any other prayers and praises that we want to lift up? Liz? On the 22nd of this month, my daughter will be 40. Oh. She has her baby. Okay. Born last June. All right. 40 years ago, I had just turned 30, and I had her. Wow. We're continuing a bad tradition of oh. <laughs> older parents. <laughs> well, but uh, I'm thankful Great. for them and thankful Absolutely. for Grandma. So there you go. Yeah. Grandma, Granny, Mima. Yeah. There you go. Grams. Grams. All right. <laughs> um, does anybody else? Laura. Uh, praise for my parents are celebrating 41 years of marriage tomorrow. All right. Uh, mm. Which is just a real blessing. They had a hard road to travel throughout that time a lot of the time, but God's been very good, so I'm very thankful they're still together and still um, showing us how it works. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Hey, you know, we used to say something in the church. I don't know if some of y'all know this or not, but God is good. All the time. All the time. So if you ever hear me say that, that's your response. God is good. All the time. Amen. I saw our friend Sharon today before church, the, the lady that has cancer. And she said to say hello to everybody and that she loves you and to tell you all that she's having some challenges, but she's doing all right. And she thanks you for your prayers. Good. Amen. I mean, she is a fighter, that's for sure. I'll tell you what. Uh, even when she was healthy, she is a fighter. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Don't get in her way. Yeah. No. <laughs> but she's been, she's been on this cancer journey for a while, y'all. And she knows that we're praying for her. Rosemary? Um, last time I was here... Uh, I think it was mentioned about my kidney disease. And I was in stage, chronic stage four, but it just went back to three. Oh, so right. I'm just going to go. I'm thankful for that. Yeah. God is good. All, all the time. time. See, y'all good. Y'all good. But the reverse to that is God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. good. There you go. <laughs> He's good. See, there you go. But these are some amazing praises. I mean, Holy moly, wow. Sam. I have a very dear, special friend is so excited. She has planned her own birthday party on Thursday. She will be only 95. Oh, wow. Only. And, so, and she is just a joy. And she's so, she's like a five-year-old kid having a birthday party. So oh. praise God for allowing yes. us to know this. Absolutely. That is beautiful. And she is my client. Oh. We went over the other day and helped her pick out what she was going to wear, and she said, I feel like I'm going to have a wedding. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Giddy as a little schoolgirl. I love it. I love it. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. I feel like I'm forgetting something to pray for, um, but you know what's amazing is that God knows what it is. God knows. God knows exactly what it is. Do we have any unspokens today? Go ahead and take a look around the room. Out there in Cyberland, there are quite a few hands up. During the week, it is our blessing um, to lift each other up in prayer. Um, I'll ne I, I don't think I'll ever stop saying it, that 
Galatians 6 2 says to bear one another's burdens. And you all, as a church, already do that. You give of your time, you give your talents, you give of you. And what is amazing <laughs> is that when we bear one another's burdens, one way that we can do that is through prayer. We create that intimacy, that connection, that relationship with God. And we do that lifting up of prayer for others. We lift up each other to God. It's not only just a connection with God. It is a relationship with God and with each other. And what's really cool is that you don't have to parade around and do it because folks know you're going to do it. Because you know what? This is a praying church. This is a praying church. Um, and I thank you for you. I really do. You all are amazing folks. I love you, but more importantly, God loves you. So, you know what? Let's go to God. Loving God, there are so many things, Lord, to, to, on our minds to pray for, on our hearts to pray for. So many things, Lord, to, to just praise you for, Lord. I just, Lord, I, I have in my heart and in my soul that you dance with us. I have in my very spirit inside me, deep inside, that you cry with us when we cry. When we go through struggles, you are right there with us. You are holding us. You are carrying us closer than the air that we breathe. You are near to us. And right now, Lord, we come near to you. We lift up the things of our heart, the things of our minds, our souls, even things that no one knows about. You told us that in your word that you knew us before we were even formed in the womb. You know the number of hairs on our head. You know us. I thank you, Lord, for joy for longevity, for seasoned folks who act like little four-year-olds, Lord. For relationships that are long and strong. For folks going through cancer and sickness and illnesses, Lord. Sometimes these things, the struggles tear us down, Lord, but I just pray right now, Lord, that you would be and continue to be in the middle of those struggles. And for this church, Lord, I praise you for these, your saints, Lord, your beautiful, beloved creation, for their willingness, Lord, to, to, to learn more of you, to, to praise you, to pray, to, to just be present to you. And I thank you for their willingness to bear one another's burdens. I mean it, Lord, when I say that I love them. And I doubly mean it when I say, more importantly, you love them. I thank you for them, Lord. And I pray that at some point during this week, here and in Cyberland, Lord, that folks would look in the mirror. And when they look in the mirror, please help them to remind themselves that they are beautiful, that they are beloved, that they are a walking blessing. Remind them that they love you. Remind them that you love them to keep that relationship going. We love you, Lord, in your holy, precious name. Amen. 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 All right, so um, as we come to the time in our service um, for the offering, I wanted to share um, just a brief passage from Luke 21, um, which is the widow's offering or the widow's might. Um, and uh, it's from when Jesus and his disciples were in the temple. Uh, as Jesus looked up, he saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury. 
he also saw a poor widow put in two very small copper coins truly i tell you he said this poor widow has put in more than all the others all these people gave their gifts out of their wealth but she out of her poverty put in all she had to live on um and i just want y'all to kind of be thinking on that um you know when we are when we ask for gifts um that can look like money that can look like a lot of different things um it might be that you're being called to um you know volunteer for a role in service or um there's um uh, a neighbor that you've been really meaning to reach out to and um they're looking for an offering of your time and attention whatever that might look like for you i encourage you to um be thinking about um giving what you're called to and uh, not necessarily um you know what what's expected but just what we um what God is wanting you to give so as the offering plate comes around uh, feel free to give as you're able or as you're feeling called um bless the plate with your touch and with your prayers um so that all of the gifts that we give can be multiplied thank you Dear Lord, thank you so much for the gifts that were given today and that we will be um, giving over the course of the next week and as time to come. I ask that you would take all that was given um, and is to be given and multiply it for your kingdom and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. Let's see if I can coordinate myself here.
Um, so for our scripture today, we have two passages. Um, the first is from Psalm 23, and this is from the NRSVA translation. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. And then our second passage is from John 9, verses 1 through 7 from the message. Walking down the street, Jesus saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, causing him to be born blind? Jesus said, you're asking the wrong question. You're looking for someone to blame. There is no such cause effect here. Look, instead of what, look instead for what God can do. We need to be energetically at work for the one who sent me here, working while the sun shines. When night falls, the workday is over. For as long as I am in the world, there is plenty of light. I am the world's light. He said this, and then spit in the dust, made a clay paste with the saliva, rubbed the paste on the blind man's eyes, and said, Go, wash at the pool of Siloam. Siloam means scent. The man went and washed and saw. Excuse me for a moment. One of these days I'm going to get this microphone set up. By the time that happens, it'll probably Jesus come back or something. Like that. Excuse me. <laughs> Before I get into the sermon, deacons, don't, uh, we're, we're just going to meet really quickly. Um, about 10 minutes after service, because Laura has to go count uh, this, this stuff. So it won't take long uh, at all. It won't take long. So, All right, so let's move into the, uh, <coughs> the message. There once was a newborn baby a prematurely born, newborn baby, by two months. One early evening, a young pregnant mother was driving home after a day of shopping. The sun was setting and she was dog tired. She just wanted to get home before dark. Then it happened. <coughs> An oncoming driver crossed the yellow lines, causing her to swerve off the road. She ended up in the ditch. Somehow she made it out, but it didn't stop the shock and fear rushing through her body. When she returned home, she walked through the front door and called to her husband, We have to go to the hospital now. Her husband thought she was just kidding, and he played it off, and she said, no, we got to go now. So off they went. Long story short, the doctors thought she was not really in labor and were about to send her home if the baby didn't start coming by a certain time. Well, that baby must have heard the doctor because labor kicked in. And sure enough, the baby was on its way. But there were complications. There were huge complications. Two months premature is dangerous in any decade, but in the 1960s, it was deadly. The doctors couldn't get the baby's lungs to work. Death was not far away. The father held the baby for about 15 seconds, and the mom didn't get to hold the baby at all. Well, till about three months later. The baby was dying and rushed to an incubator. That little two pound, two ounce baby? Well, God must have had a plan for that child because the baby survived. 
and thrived. They thrived as best as the little bitty body could let it thrive. God must have had some pretty incredible things in store for them to do in the world. Must have been waiting for the right time to send the baby as an adult into the world. God would send. The baby would be sent. Sent. In the first chapter of the Gospel, of, excuse me, in chapter 9 of the Gospel of John, we read about a man who washed in the pool of Siloam. Siloam means sent. And this scent caught my eye. So Jesus is walking down the street with the disciples, all right? And, and I imagine they're just having this beautiful conversation between themselves. And then here we read about the blind man. The disciples asked Jesus a strange question. Well, at least strange to me. Rabbi, teacher, who's responsible for this man being blind? Was it, was it the man and his sins? Or, or was it the, the man's parents and their sins? What did they do to cause this blindness? Jesus, who caused the blindness? Then in true Jesus style, in true Jesus style, I imagine he paused, took a deep breath, exhaled, and told the disciples, you're looking for the wrong culprit. You're looking for someone to blame, to fault for his blindness. You're stuck in this cause and effect Right. You want to know who dropped the ball. Who? You want to know who to blame. Saints, how many times do we get stuck in cause and effect ruts? How many times do we fall into the blame game? Perhaps we were rude to somebody. They respond in kind to us, and the dominoes start to fall. Well, if that person over there hadn't have been so rude, I wouldn't have turned away or walked away and stomped off and huffed. I just wouldn't have done it. And you know, I just had. I just had to vent about it because I was so angry. I mean, I just had to tell somebody. My inner hillbilly, my inner hillbilly, <laughs> would call that meeting ugly with ugly with a side helping of gossip. <laughs> Or maybe we don't take time to breathe when people make us angry. Maybe we don't take time to breathe when we allow them to make us angry. We've had it up to here with others junk and we just explode. Well, I wouldn't have exploded enough if other people would have just done their part and not acted like such an... I'm going to let you fill in that blank. <laughs> or, my life would be so much easier if I had a bigger paycheck. I'm tired of living paycheck to paycheck. If I just had more money, I could go out and eat, out to eat every night. I could, I could even have a, 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 a better wardrobe. Or I could have enough money to get that fancy SUV my neighbor down the street got. Pity. Excuses, impatience, anger, blame. Sometimes we do those things and it doesn't really help us at all. But when we turn those things around, we get something completely different. And the Gospel of John shows us what that is. Jesus tells point blank what it is that we shouldn't and should do. Avoid the blame. And look for what God can do. And in true Jesus style again. A few moments goes by in that passage and Jesus shows us what God can do. Jesus spits in the dust and makes his paste with, with, the, with the, uh, his spit in the dirt. He rubs it on the man's eyes and he tells the man, who is blind, to go to the pool of Siloam and wash. He does it. 
and now he sees. Now, am I the only one on the earth that can't stand a wet willy? I can't stand those things. They make me cringe. And, 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 and what about when you have to lick your fingers to open those plastic produce baggy things? That is disgusting. Mm. Oh, and this one. Am I the only one that hated it when your mama or your grandma or your Aunt Bertha, see some of y'all know what's coming, they take a tissue and they lick it and wipe something off your face and, oh my word, I love your mama, I love your grandma, but my goodness gracious, fool, that just was disgusting. I'm sorry, Jesus, but I don't know how much I would have liked what you did with that spit paste stuff. But you know what, Jesus? You know what? I understand why he did it. At least in my thinking, I think I understand. Y'all, did Jesus really need the paste to heal the man? No. I don't think so. Well, what if it wasn't about the paste? What if it was all about faith? What if it was about the man's willingness to do what Jesus had called him to do? How did the man get to the pool in the first place? I mean, he was... He couldn't see, right? And then if he couldn't see before, he can't see now because he's got spit mud on his face. So, okay, so we had another reading today, Psalm 23. I could do a month-long sermon series on Psalm 23. It's one of my favorites. Um, but I won't. So some, some folks might associate Psalm 23 with funerals. But I like thinking of it in terms of life. I like thinking of it in terms of living. You see, the entire psalm is meant to show God's character. More specifically, it shows God's provision. It shows how everyday, mundane things like eating and drinking and resting and the not-so-mundane things of being secure and safe can show what God can do. I'm sure we've heard that Jesus is the good shepherd, the one who takes care of us. And Psalm 23 is just that reminder we need. When we read about dwelling in the house of the Lord forever, God doesn't want to just provide for our everyday needs. God wants to bring us a community to enjoy that with, to share that with, like you do, saints. Did you realize that? That you are community for other people and yourselves? That strikes me as so beautiful. I shouldn't use strike and beautiful in the same sentence, but there you go. <coughs> but it's, it's beautiful. Because sometimes when we see what God can do, it's God showing up with skin on, y'all. The person who, um, I'm not going to mention names, but there's a, a person who I recently heard of that has an entire back seat of their car with food for another person. Provisions. That person is skin. They, they got my skin on. That's pretty amazing. Let's see what God can do. In, in the Gospel of John, That man was a living example of what it means for the Lord to provide. The man didn't give excuses. He didn't pity himself or blame others. He simply did what Jesus asked. But that question of how in the world did the man get there to the pool in the first place still kind of nags at me a little bit. <laughs> See, somebody must have helped him. I don't know how familiar he might have been with his surroundings, but he must have had some help. I've seen pictures of that pool. I did a little bit of historical research, which I love doing. And that pool is pretty deep, and it's pretty wide, and pretty tricky to step down into. You see, the pool, pool of Siloam, it was considered by some to be the place where people could go to bathe um, so they could be ceremon ceremonially, ceremonially, yeah, that thing, cleansed before going into the temple. You go in, you wash off, you go out. You see, if I were blind, 
and had this mud on my eyes, stepped into the pool to bathe <coughs> and go out seeing, I'd be doing some praising, y'all. I'd be doing some crying, some yelling. You would see this big girl dance like you have never seen a big girl dance in your life. <laughs> and out of my lips would probably come, look what God can do. A man who was blind would have needed the help of others, whether it was someone near him, the disciples, or maybe Jesus. I don't think the man thought his help would come in the form of some spit and dust from Jesus. I don't think that at all. But what, what I am 100% certain of is that he was faithful, and he didn't mind getting a little muddy. He didn't mind getting a little wet. He didn't mind it at all. He didn't mind if there was an inconvenience. And if he was inconvenienced or scared or wondered what in the world is this man doing, we don't know about it. He didn't mind it. Jesus told the man to go, and he went. He bathed in the pool of Siloam, the pool that had been sent. Friends, this week, I encourage each of us to get a little muddy, to remember God's provisions, to turn from the things that keep us from bathing in God's love and provision. Let's have the faith of the man who was blind. Let's have the kind of faith that opens our eyes, our hearts, our mouths, our souls to the calling of God to go. To go and love. And that little baby in the story, I'm thankful God gave the medical staff the skills to get my lungs to work. I spent 40 years waiting to live out the call to go love through formal ministry. But saints, we don't have to wait 40 years, four months, or even four hours. We have an opportunity to step outside of these doors, to step out in faith and to go. To step out with faith knowing God will provide. Let's go love today and show the world what God can do. Amen. 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 before Jesus was crucified. He gathered with his disciples and those who had loved him. And they had a meal together. And at some point during the meal, he took bread from the table, he lifted it to heaven, he gave thanks for it, he blessed it, and he broke it. He turned to them and he said, this is my body, broken for you. Eat ye all. And at some point during the meal, he took the cup from the table and he lifted it to heaven. He blessed it, he gave thanks for it, and he said, this is my blood shed for you as a sign of a new and everlasting covenant for the forgiveness of sins. And each time you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, do so in remembrance of me. Do so in remembrance of me. And in our tradition here in this church, we say the mystery of our faith, that Christ, Christ has died, died, Christ, Christ has risen, risen Christ, Christ is coming again. again. Hallelujah. Holy God, we thank you for you. We thank you for your gift of love. I ask that you would bless these elements, Lord, whether they be the cup, the, the, the wafer, Lord, or the small communion cups. In whatever form that takes for communion today, even a crouton and a glass of water, Lord, I pray that you would bless it and that there would be reminders of your unconditional love. Amen. Amen. For those of you who may be new to this communion, 
um, MCC Church celebrate in open communion. And what will happen is Mo and I will be up here serving. There will be a holder in the middle. We will either, by your request, hand you a communion cup packet if you wish not to come up, or excuse me, be served that this way, or we will take a wafer, dip it in the juice, and offer it to you with a blessing. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.